in one of Paul's letters to the Romans, he says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And I think America's death penalty exemplifies that perhaps more than anything. Today and historically, uh, race is the greatest predictor of who gets the death penalty in the United States. It is that last fail safe uh, for white supremacy uh, that says that ultimately white life must be valued uh, above black life. In Georgia, you're 11 times more likely to get the death penalty if the victim is white than if the victim is a person of color. You're 22 times more likely to get the death penalty if the uh, offender is black and the victim is white. I think that of all of our uh, institutions in America, the criminal justice system is probably the least impacted by the civil rights movement. In the late 1960s, we were looking at about 300,000 people in our prisons. Now that's grown to over 2 million. And African Americans uh, make up 50% and more of the prison population. Georgia has scheduled an execution date for death row prisoner Troy Davis, whose case has been taken up by death penalty opponents across the globe. The Troy Davis case epitomizes so much that's wrong with the death penalty. You had a poor black man charged with killing a white police officer, a young white police officer. There was no physical evidence tying Troy Davis to the case or to the, to the murder, I should say. There was no gun ever found. So the entire case really was based on eyewitness testimony, which uh, the data uh, clearly uh, helps us to know is, is incredibly unreliable. And seven of the nine witnesses who testified against him uh, ended up recanting their testimony. Clearly, it is the logic of Jim Crow, the logic of, of race in America, uh, that is the best explanation uh, for why Troy Davis, in the end, was executed. Convicted by a criminal justice system that is too often more criminal than just. Stigmatized by the state in a process more obsessed with finality than truth. And yet he, hold, he held fast to his dignity while on death row. For every nine people who have been executed in the United States, we've identified one innocent person who has subsequently been exonerated. Uh, that's a really horrific error rate. But we persist in the death penalty because we uh, recognize that it's only the poor, it's only the marginalized, it's only uh, people of color that really have to bear that risk. The time around the execution of Troy Davis was a teachable moment for America's religious community. They learned about the case. They joined in the effort for clemency. They did things they'd never done before. And then Troy Davis was executed. You can't unlearn something like that. Many of the discriminations, uh, many of the things that we fought against in the 60s now become legal once one is stigmatized and labeled uh, with the stamp of felon. And so once, once you circulate through America's criminal justice system, uh, even when you come out, very often defendants are denied voting rights. Uh, housing uh, uh, discrimination becomes legal. Employment discrimination certainly becomes legal. Uh, uh, no access to public benefits or student loans, even if you're trying to um, uh, follow the American path uh, of upward mobility through higher education. All of these issues flow from our failure uh, to be more honest about the legacy of slavery, the legacy of terrorism, the legacy of lynching, the legacy of Jim Crow. And because we haven't talked honestly about those things, there are these presumptions out there that contribute uh, to the disparities that we are currently seeing in the criminal justice system. More than 50% of the people on death row in the South were represented by juries of their peers who are composed of all white or all but one white juror. And what that does is it, it disenfranchises African Americans from both their right and their civic duty to serve on juries. Deciding perhaps the greatest power that we give our government, 
the power to kill. If we accept the death penalty, we have to accept randomness, arbitrariness, racial bias, and discrimination against the poor. Uh, that is part of what you buy when you buy capital punishment in America today. The religious community in America has enormous potential towards dealing with the impacts of racial bias and the death penalty, and ultimately, we hope, towards repealing the death penalty. You know, it has been five or more decades since the mainline churches in America called for repealing the death penalty. And I think now is the time when that call is really being taken into fruition and has grown, thanks in part to Troy Davis. There are hundreds of Troy Davises in this country uh, on death row, uh, people whose trials and proceedings have not been marked by fairness. I think in our criminal justice system in particular, uh, we need more hope, uh, we need more compassion, and we need more mercy. And if the faith community is not contributing its voice, its resources, its perspective in support of that, then we're going to have a huge challenge in persuading a broader society to think more deeply, more honestly, and more thoughtfully about these issues.